If the diode has a constant voltage drop of 0.6 volts if conducting or forward biased, find ID, the current labeled through the diode. First of all, isn't this current just zero? It's labeled in the opposite direction to what it would have been if the diode was actually conducting, right? If the diode is forward biased, then the current would flow from anode to cathode, like this. So ID must immediately be zero, right? Actually, not too fast. You see, if the diode was indeed forward biased, and there was a current of, say, 2 milliamperes going like this, then ID would be nothing but negative 2 milliamperes. The magnitude of the current, but since its labeled direction is opposite to the actual direction, we just attach a negative sign. So, let's not be too hasty, perhaps we'll get a negative answer. Okay, with that said, how do we actually do the analysis? It all boils down to whether the diode is conducting, forward biased, or not conducting, or cut off, reverse biased. How can we know this? In truth, we don't. We're just going to have to make an assumption, solve accordingly, and then check the validity of our assumption once we have the result. So we'll assume that the diode is forward biased and has this constant voltage drop of 0.6 volts that the problem talks about. The way we represent a constant voltage in a circuit is a voltage source. So assuming that the diode is conducting, we can replace it with this 0.6 volt battery and label a forward current IF from anode to cathode. Now, we'll analyze this assumed circuit and see if our assumption makes sense. What circuit analysis technique shall we use? Nodal, mesh. In this case, I'm going to opt for mesh analysis. We have three loops. I'm going to label clockwise currents, I1, I2, and I3, like this. And then we'll write KVL equations around those loops. I'm going to do it a little bit faster this time, though. So for mesh 1, here's how we can do it with what we call the inspection method. We'll add all the resistors in our mesh. We have a 5 kilo ohm and a 1 kilo ohm resistor, so this will be 6 I1. Notice that I didn't multiply by the 1000 of the kilo because I'm just going to have the current be in milliamperes. Kilo and milli cancel out. So this is a simplified way of doing things. So 6 kilo ohms in our mesh, meaning 6 times I1. And then what we do is subtract what is common with other meshes. We have this 5 kilo ohm resistor in common with the second mesh, so we subtract 5 I2. And then we have the 1 kilo ohm resistor common with mesh 3, so we subtract I3. And then we have the minus 8 volts because we're entering the voltage source from negative to positive. We're done with the loop, so this must be 0 by KVL. Let's take the negative 8 to the other side, and this will become our first equation. For the second mesh, we'll also use the inspection method. We have a total of 25 kilo ohms within the second mesh. But we have 5 kilo ohms in common with the first mesh, so we'll subtract 5I1. Do we have anything in common with the third mesh? No, but we have the 0.6 volt source, which is resembling the diode, basically. We're going through this battery from positive to negative, so we'll put plus 0.6. Again, we'll take the constant to the other side. And we have our second equation. Finally, for mesh 3, we have a total of 2 kilo ohms in our loop, minus 1 kilo ohm, the resistor in common with mesh 1. Nothing is common with mesh 2 in terms of resistors, but we're going through the 0.6 volt battery from negative to positive this time, 
so we'll put negative 0.6. This completes the loop, so it must be 0 by kVL. We'll take the constant to the other side. And with that, we have our third and final equation. So we now have a system, three linear equations with three unknowns. You can solve them using substitution, elimination, whatever. We get approximately 1.8 milliamperes for I1. Remember, milli because the kilo is incorporated in our equations. I2 is around 0.34 milliamperes and I3 is in the vicinity of 1.2. Okay, what was the purpose again? This was all to find IF and therefore either confirm or contradict our assumption. IF, the current we labeled, is basically I2 minus I3. We have to express it in terms of our mesh currents, and we can see that I2 agrees with IF in direction, but I3 opposes IF. So IF must be I2 minus I3, which means it's approximately 0 0.34 minus 1.2, which is roughly negative 0 0.9 milliamperes. The magnitude does not really matter. What matters here is that this is a negative quantity. So, since IF is negative, we can see that the diode is not forward biased. It's actually reverse biased. Because if it were conducting, then IF would be positive. Because we chose the labeled direction to be in agreement with a conducting diode. Now that we know the diode was in fact reverse biased, we can go back to the original circuit and confidently state that ID must be zero. This was our original uneducated guess, if you will, but we had to do it properly. So the final answer is ID equals zero.